Welcome, and thank you for participating in the Texas State University Women Entrepreneurship Founder Series. Let's rejoin our conversation with Darsha Ham, the COO and co-founder of Melanoid Exchange. What's been one of the, um, you, you clearly have a, a strong faith. Um, what else has inspired you uh, to, to keep going and um, you know, to reach for your dreams and, and to challenge yourself? Um, well, like you said, I have to say first and foremost that my faith um, in my relationship with God has been the driving force for it all because there had there have been times where I've been confused. I've been, I'm like, okay, I made this leap of faith. Now what's going on? Okay, I need direction. And so he has supplied it for me every single step of the way. Um, I've always gotten this discernment or this direction that's been next next level. I, I always say this, um, people think I'm, you know, some people may, may agree with this. Some people are like, I've never seen it in action. But for me, many people have seen it in action, like faith in action. I always say it's faith in action because literally I went from being a nurse, um, mental health nurse, I went, I was a trauma surgical and a psychiatric nurse. And I went from there to literally pitching at competitions and winning first place um, in the first few months of my journey. Um, and then I went on to even win bigger um, pitch competitions. I won um, along with my husband, but I'm typically the person that goes up to pitch. We used to pitch together, but as of lately, I'm the person that goes and pitches. And like recently, um, I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of Afrotech. It is one of the largest multicultural tech events um, in the world. And we pitched and we got first place. So, um, wow. you know, but I wouldn't have been there as I believe without my faith. And the next thing that drives me um, would truly have to be the, the, the drive that I have to see change. So the reason why I did so much in college, right? was because I wanted change. I um, saw that there was a need. I saw that we didn't have a sense of community in the African-American community on campus. Um, I saw that everyone else had their own kind of community. They always felt, you know, but ours was pretty scattered. And even though we had um, African-American uh, Greek organizations, as far as this place of community and, and sense of home, um, for our community, it wasn't there. And many of the leaders before our time were didn't reflect the community um, at large, right? So like there would be um, predominantly maybe um, white male or female, but you would not see any African-American um, male or females uh, leading. And so, um, and even though there were, there would be male, they would be males and they, and it wouldn't be a lot of women. And so I said, okay, I went to, I mean, really, just really my desire to see change. I went to our Dean, I went to our student affairs. I, I let my voice be heard. And then we started, um, um, and I'm not talking about the Dean of my college of nursing. I'm talking about the Dean of Texas Women's University, which is where I actually graduated from. Mm -hmm. um, we we started we had a whole weekend we did like we did so many things during that time just because I wanted to see change I've always been a change agent and so that really drives me in Illinois exchange because we started out with our roots in the African American community and although we've sprouted out um, we keep our heritage. We still know like our colors. Um, our colors are brown and white and different colors like that because, but we have a symbol of hands coming together and that makes the X because um, our new product is called Mel X and the X are different color hands that are bridging together and we're in this together because we want to see change, right? We know that we cannot operate by ourselves. So that is really what keeps me waking up every day. And the reason why I love technology and I love entrepreneurship because it's, you know, it, it can go one or two ways. You can do bad with it or you can do really great, awesome, life-changing generational things. Look at Facebook, look at all these different things that were literally entrepreneurship 
at work, right? Um, and they have caused so much change. They changed life as we know it. So just think if we brought in our desire to change things for better and we desire to change things for humanity or for the environment or for the planet or whatever it may be. And for me, you have faith on your side. It's no, it's no limit to what you could go on to do. I believe that generation, like our generation can see impact um, just through us, you know, so sure. we're, we're the change agent agents. So that's, that's truly um, the two things that really drive me to keep going and, and just really uh, see past all the chaos that sometimes goes on in entrepreneurship. It allows me to see past it. That's, that's wonderful uh, to hear. I mean, I, I certainly think that uh, one of the goals of this series is to listen to voices like yours and know that those voices um, turn into action. And that is really what ultimately drives um, valuable, long lasting uh, change and yeah. that we all are, are very much looking forward to um, and looking and to, to support. Um, tell me, um, a little, is there a piece of advice that you would give to young entrepreneurs? You mentioned that you um, won several pitch competitions and an awful lot of people, that's a very intimidating environment uh, to walk into. Do you have any suggestions or advice for others on how to overcome that, how to deal with that, um, or just thrive in that uh, uncomfortableness? Yes, um, so I'd have to say, I'm a bit privileged in this area, so I have to acknowledge my privilege because I've been kind of speaking at stuff since I was in the second grade. So speaking for me has always come natural. Now, I did go through a phase in my life, and this was in college, um, where I didn't want to get in front of anyone to speak. I didn't want to go and do anything. And although I knew I possessed this gift, I was like, I'm just... I'm just going to take the seat back. I'm just going to, you know, I, I'm just going to watch everyone else. And I would always be fearful to go up and speak. And even after I graduated, I was always so unsure of myself um, when I got into Melanoid Exchange because I always felt like, well, who wants to listen to me? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a nurse. I don't, I, I'm not an entrepreneur. I didn't start, you know, this million dollar business or whatever, you know, I didn't do all these things. So who would listen to me? But what I had to tell myself and what I want to tell um, anybody who's listening is that someone really wants to hear from you. You'd be surprised who's truly listening you'd be surprised who your story would impact your dream would impact your company would impact you'd be surprised who's truly watching we don't really realize because we're inside of this body and we're just operating every single day our greatness sometimes we get so comfortable with what we're used to having we're comfortable because we know we've created this great business or we have great business ideas so it doesn't come as a surprise to us but to others on the outside it's very much a surprise it's, it's greatness and it's awesome to witness and it's awesome to be a part of so you should speak anyhow you should allow you should not allow um this fear which is um things that we make up in our head right like we typically make up this fear in our head that becomes real so it starts as a thought that you're scared, you're fearful, you're not good enough, and then it becomes actually real. So you start doing self-sabotaging behaviors um, that cause that fear to now become real. And so what I wanna encourage you to do is channel your thoughts, start taking note of what you're thinking and what you're telling yourself. And if you are telling yourself something negative, I challenge you, I challenge you to um, challenge that thought with, something positive right something that's actually going to move you forward so if you say no one's going to listen to me well you challenge that thought with but i have something to say you know no one may be interested but i'm interested and i'm going to put and i'm going to make sure that i let my interest be known and i'll be surprised who comes back to me you just continue to challenge that's what i do all the time because it doesn't stop you know um i was reading a book or listening to a podcast by Arlen Hamilton. Um, she's an awesome entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur and investor. Um, and she has a book 
um, out now and I was listening to one of her podcasts and she said she's challenging this imposter syndrome um, and because she believes that, you know, we don't have to feel as if we're not supposed to be there because you can be there basically. Um, so I used to be like, well, it's just imposter syndrome. And I would make that excuse every time to reason why I felt that way. But when I started to realize that, hey, these guys really don't know much more, you know, as much as me. And I didn't, yeah, I didn't have thousands of years. I'm not privileged. I didn't come from money or anything like that. But I know now that, you know, it's okay. You, I believe that we're supposed to be wherever we're, wherever we are. So I just want to challenge you to challenge those thoughts and to know that someone does care about what you're saying. You'd be surprised on who's watching you, who's watching your business, who's excited to see your business. We have billions of people in this world. So, you know, someone's going to love it and you just have to go where people love your gift. You have to go where people, that's, that's what it's called when you find your target audience, right? Like everyone might not need Melex, right? And so that's okay. You can go to wherever you desire to go to, but there's a group of people who have been waiting for Melex to grow, waiting for Melex to come into fruition. And so somebody's waiting for whoever is going to watch this. They're waiting for your business. They're waiting for you to go forward with that idea and to actually um, be consistent with it and do it. And um, there's a whole target audience out there for everything. I mean, people love all kinds of things. So you'd be surprised what target audience you'll find if you just search and you just, um, and you look for them. So yeah.